the Lord, everybody. God is so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. Ladies, today I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And I wanted to talk to you because I know that over the past couple of years, we have gone through some things. And I know also in going through those things, I know that we have grown. And so we need to be able to do what the Bible tells us to do. He says that the older women are to teach the younger women. And so that's what I inspire to do. Um, I, I want to share some experiences with you as well as looking at some of the women in the Bible to see what we can, you know, glean from their life and how we can apply it to our life so that we get even stronger. Because I know there were some single mothers out there over the past year, you know, trying to keep your family together. I know that there were some married women and some women who were married to preachers and, you know, that were going through so much. So it's time for us to just step back for a minute, you know, re regroup, and go forward in the Lord. And so today I want to invite you to join me in this study. And I know that, um, you know, God has something for us. And if it blesses you or if you have something that you want to say or add to what we're studying, feel free to leave a comment in um, the comment box. And as the women begin to watch the videos, they can be inspired by your story as well. I want you to know, ladies, that God loves you. He's made us strong. He has made us resilient. Hallelujah. Even persistent because we keep going. So come on and go with me as we look into the That's word the of John, God. John, the second chapter and the 19th verse. Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days, I will raise it up. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that it gives us hope. Thank you that it gives us strength, God. Thank you that it is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Thank you, God, that we can read it, God, and learn about you, God, and grow from your word. So, Father, I pray that your anointing would flow. Pray, God, that I would only speak those things that you would have me to say. Lead me, Father, through this message by your Holy Spirit so that your people would be edified and you, my Lord, would be glorified. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of mine heart, Father, let it be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I pray and I ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen you to know tonight that women do a lot of serving in the house of the Lord. And if the truth were told, there are in some churches more women than men. But whether you are a male or a female, you must remember that the house of the Lord should be a house of prayer. You know, a place where those that are seeking God can come and not be distracted by all the goings on inside and outside of the sanctuary. The house of God is a place of refuge, not for sale. See, if you are sick in your body, you're not looking for merchandise. You're looking for a healer. The gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter, it speaks about this account where Jesus was cleaning up the temple. You know what I want you to know tonight? Jesus did not only clear out the temple, but after he had cleared out the temple, Again, the Gospel of Matthew lets us know that healing began to take place in the temple. Let me read to you what it says. The Gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter, the 13th through the 14th verse. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. See, before Jesus cleared out the temple, the sick couldn't get through. 
Jesus, when he walked on this earth, I want you to know all he did, you can read in the Bible, he healed the sick and he delivered people time after time again. See, God's house, again, is a house of prayer, is a house of refuge, is where those that are in need can go. And I'm sure when Jesus saw all of this taking place, that made him quite upset. Hallelujah. This one that spent so much time with those that were hurting. And how about this? Jesus took them Pharisees to school. You know what? When he dropped the real bomb on them in the midst of all of this going on, the money changers. And then after he cleared out that, you know, the people getting healed. And then he dropped the bomb on them. He said, and this was going to really mess up their little religious pretenses. Jesus said in the text in the gospel of John, the second chapter in the 19th verse, it says, Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple. And in three days, I'll raise it up. Hallelujah. See, the greatest restoration was about to happen. That which had been destroyed by Satan in the garden where he, you know, made the woman tempted um, Eve and then she gave to her husband Adam and Adam sinned and sin came in and death came in and you know Satan got some authority because it was handed over by Adam that which had been destroyed by Satan was going to be redeemed by Jesus and although they would crucify our Lord and Savior Jesus and lay him in a tomb I want you to know that on the third day he was going to get up out that grave he arose hallelujah and millions with him of believers you know now share in his death his burial and his resurrection and I came to remind someone today that Jesus is alive and although some things have happened you know to the church we are still the bride of Christ triumphantly I can hear the Lord saying upon this rock I be my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and I want you to know at the appointed time we shall see the risen Savior and we will be that church when that Savior comes back Jesus we shall be that church without spot and without wrinkle because we have loved him we have honored him and we have served him hallelujah the gospel of John again declares the second chapter and the 19th verse Jesus answered and said to them destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up I never want to close one of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story. The Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was God's sacrificial lamb, because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16 he says for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life so that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior to wash away all of your sins Romans 10 9 says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says if you call on the name of the Lord he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also if you have walked away from the Lord come on back home. Just say Lord I confess that I am a sinner. 
I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.